Hello everyone and welcome inside the Memorial Coliseum. Tonight we have IPFW hosting Anderson. The Dons coming in, riding a three-game losing streak, returning home trying to snap that skid right now. Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley, president of Jim Rats Basketball, owner I should say of Jim Rats Basketball. Bill, uh, let's talk a little bit about this three-game losing streak. The Dons trying to snap that, the latest one coming at the hands of Wright State. Tommy, it's a, as we talked to the Marigold game the last time we were on, is that uh, they're still trying to find their shooting range. And then I think that's really affected mentally in the last two or three games. They lost a close game at Eastern Michigan and went to Wright State and didn't have the effort that Dane was looking for. And they just have not found that enthusiasm for the game yet. And I think it's all attributable back to the shooting situation. Don's come in 4-11 and 11 now, trying to turn things around as they get into the part of the schedule that year by year has always been the easier part of the schedule and you look at this current three game homestand that they will begin tonight this is a place where they can get some wins starting here tonight against the Ravens. This is a real launching pad for tonight as they go start the conference season with Western Illinois here at home next week. It's really key that we have a great effort tonight, both from a physical standpoint as well as a shooting standpoint, but mentally just preparing themselves for this next big run in January and February. Absolutely should be a good one. We will have the starting lineups and the tip-off from the Coliseum when we come back. You're watching IPFW Basketball on my TV. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. It's IPFW Mastodon Basketball, live from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. Brought to you by College 5 Sports on my network. Digital broadcast 33.2, Comcast 252. Welcome back. We're moments away from tip-off here from the Coliseum. IBFW and Anderson getting ready to go at it. We got the starting lineups going on out here on the floor, so that's what we're going to get to right now. We will start with the visiting Ravens from Anderson, and there's a lot of different things to look at when you look at this roster. First of all, it's a roster filled with players from Indiana. Every single player that is on this roster is from the Hoosier State. So. Vincent Van going to be your number one. He really gets the Ravens into their offense, and he is a player that you're going to want to watch all night. Brandon Coffer will join him in the backcourt. In the front in the front court, we have Nick Vandergrift and also Keith Dabney, and the one you want to watch out for, Rodney Holiday. He is their leading scorer at just over 13 points a game. They will look to get him involved right off the bat. As for the home IBFW Mastodons, Chris Perkins gonna run the show as usual from the point guard position. Kari Johnson continues to increase his minutes on the floor. He is in the starting lineup for Carruthers. Obviously not going to play in this game, still bothered by a foot injury. Elsewhere we have Justin Hawkins. Hawk has been playing well as of late. As of late, Jerome Burroughs coming off a career high 10 rebounds against Wright State. And Tyler Best rounding out the starting five for Dane Fife and the IPFW Mastodons. Bill, let's talk uh, keys to the game here in the first several minutes of this ball game. What do we want to see from the Dons right off the bat to get out to a good start? I think the key thing is their mental approach to this game tonight. They need a win, they need a quality win, and they need an emotional type situation to get their whole kickstart going for this Western Illinois game next week. So even though this is an NIA school, they need to have the kind of effort at both ends of the court to set the tone early. 
was talking to Dane Fife this afternoon. He said that, you know, for whatever reason, they've just had a hard time meshing chemistry-wise. And you really hope that uh, they can start to put things together from a standpoint of the chemistry with the old guys that have been in the program for a few years, the new guys that are trying to work their way into the program. And now that we're past January 1, that's when the chemistry really needs to start coming together for every team in the country. And uh, it's definitely a concern for IPFW. There's no question about that, Tommy. I think this is a key game tonight, pivotal game tonight, in terms of being the, the thrusting point for them to get on to the what I think they can still salvage a 15-win season. They've had a lot of heartbreaking losses. They've not shot the ball well on a consistent basis. But those things they can overcome. They've been working hard in practice. They've been working hard from the coaching staff to, to get some different sets. Dane's changed his lineup tonight to go a little bit bigger than what he has been. So this is a key pivotal game tonight. Burroughs with that long wingspan, able to control the tip. And we are off and running here from the Coliseum. IPFW trying to snap a three-game slide. Returning home for the first of a three-game homestand. Tyler Best down inside, misses the baby, gets his own rebound. It's going to go off the Ravens and stay with the Dons. Nice offensive board by Tyler to continue to follow his shot. And the Ravens, although not the biggest of teams, going to challenge the Dons tonight on the boards. Showing the 2-3 zone early on. They pound it down into Best, won it once again. Here's Hawkins, three ball won't go. Johnson, now Burroughs. Burroughs loses control, and here come the Ravens for the first time tonight. So, this is Holiday. he gives off deep in the corner. Swings it out, very patient the Ravens will be. They play mainly a motion offense and there's a turnover forced by IPFW right off the bat. Tommy there's a real physical advantage obviously IPFW from a size standpoint. Great tip in back there by Burroughs. And already the Dons coming out rebounding the basketball looking impressive that was their third rebound already. And you can see a real look in their eyes too from an emotional standpoint. I think these guys are ready to play tonight. This is Vincent Van in the corner. This is the young man that we told you about really makes the offense go, and he gets off to Dabney, who throws up an air ball. Johnson thought about a cutter, now going to get it out to Perkins. Right back to Johnson. Perkins gets in the lane. Nice pass to Best. That's one of the things Coach Fife was looking for out of Perkins is to get his offense started versus looking for his shot first in that point guard position. And you can see Chris is real patient letting that offense kind of gel itself before they shot. Vandergrift going to hand off at the elbow, then they get it back to him. Burrows all over him. Here's a three on the way and good. That is Vincent Van. Ravens coaching staff yelling right next to us here for them to get back on defense. Don't want to get hurt in transition by the Mastodons. Early 4-3 lead for the Dons. Burroughs. And a foul going to be called on Vandergrift. Tommy, it's really been interesting to watch Burroughs' development from the beginning of the year to now. He's really getting his confidence. He's got his footwork going. Tonight he's been able to play a little bit on the wing. So with his size and his versatility, it's going to cause some really matchup problems here for Anderson tonight. Yeah, I think that uh, you touched on it best, the, the confidence level that you can see. He looks like a different player. You could tell from the beginning of the year that he had the tools, but that ball is going to stay with IPFW. He's not tentative at all. He's got a nice bounce in his jump. He's just uh, he's real confident with his game right now. Perkins to trigger the inbound. Gets it to Johnson. Jumper on the way and good. Three out of bounds play, great look. Dons take a 6-3 early lead here. Van going to give off to Vandergrift. This is Holiday in between the rings. Leading score for Anderson. Here's Dabney. Waits for the cutters, now goes weak side. Up and under move by Vandergrift, but he can't hit, but nice move. 
Hawkins fights for the board, gets it out. We are in the opening minutes here from the Coliseum. Dons with an early lead, trying to snap that three game losing streak. Facing off against Anderson tonight. Division three opponent out of the Heartland Collegiate Conference. Great ball movement. They've made five or six passes in the half court on every offensive set. One of the things Dane's been looking for is getting offensive production both in transition and in the half court. They've shot as more free throws or, or more two point shots and more three point shots as opponents all season, but they have not been getting the free throw line like they should. And that's because their shot selection has been poor. Well, and uh, you know, compounded upon that was early on, especially in the season, they were giving up too many fouls and sending their opponents to the line way too many times. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Dabney, another turnaround. This time he drew a little bit of iron, but not much. Hawk triggers the outlet and get it up the floor quickly. Johnson on the baseline. Nice defense that time, played by Coffer. And here comes Holiday. Holiday slicing and one. That was a nice athletic play by Rodney Holiday. The freshman out of Indianapolis. Gonna try to make this a two point game at the free throw line when we come back on the other side of this break. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. And many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Hey, join head coach Dane Fife on College 5 for the Dane Fife Show featuring highlights and insight on the Mastodons from the coach and his guest. Mike Moz is your host Wednesdays at 7, Fridays at 7, and Saturdays at noon. Back to live action. And the free throw and three-point play completed by Rodney Holiday. And now pressure shown for the first time by... Tom Slider's team for the first time tonight, so Don's break it without a problem. DeWitt Scott into the game for the first time for the Don's. He's been coming off the bench as of late. Chris Perkins, no good, short on the jumper, and here come the Ravens back the other way. Quick pass down low. Dabney over Hawkins. He just cannot find the range right now. Here's Best. Looked for a handoff, now it's DeWitt. He's been hot and continues to be. Drops in his first three of the night. Tommy, great basket off their secondary break in the half court. Again, the primary was Burroughs ran the court, was open in the block, they didn't see him, but they kept the ball moving, reversed it, got a nice three-point shot there out of Scott. Here's Vandergrift. Gives off to Stodler. He's in the game for the first time tonight. Down low, DeWitt fighting for the ball, comes up with the steal. DeWitt has been playing fantastic basketball as of late. There is Hawk. Ball thrown away. Ravens really trying to get something going. Trailing early on here by five at the Coliseum, 11-6. Your score, Vandergrift 
continue to be patient. 18 on the shot clock, so plenty of time here for Anderson. Going to force the Dons to play defense for 35 seconds. Going right around. Hawkins was Holiday, and another athletic move off the window. Back to a three-point game here. There's zone again, shown. Hawkins gonna take a deep three, hits. Yeah, it's really difficult when you're hitting outside shots like that to stay in the zone. Vandergrift with Burroughs all over him, way out top. Stodler, fade away. Could have been pretty, no. Don's right back down the floor. Good pace so far to really tonight's game. Good, good transition game on every possession. They've had a chance to. Scott continues the red hot shooting, hanging and banging. Got a 21 point effort from Scott the last time out against Wright State. And he continues the hot hand as he's got two threes right off the bat. Coming off the bench tonight. And the Dons now lead by nine just like that. Tommy, really good defensive intensity by the Dons tonight. You, know, you take out three plays and Anderson really hasn't scored. Here's Vandergrift. Nice bounce pass and a strong move by Dabney, but he can't finish. Get back to Scott, though. The red hot shooting that continues as we have a timeout on the floor. Five threes in that game against Wright State. So just red hot shooting, but we have another timeout on the floor. Don's up by nine, looking for more when we come back here on my TV. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2,400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. <clears throat> so, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. Hey, if you're looking for IPFW tickets, call 260-481-6000 or go to IPFW's athletic website, GoMastodons.com. You can get individual tickets or in packages, GoMastodons.com. All right, Dabney at the line to shoot two, misses on the first. Oh, sell changes here in the lineup too, Tommy. Four substitutions into the game for IPFW. Yeah, we have a lot of new faces in there. Checking in for the first time, Demetrius Johnson, Pat Lepper in there. Demetrius Johnson really has been trying to work his way in. Also, Zelko Egerich. They lob it inside as they front the post, and Vandergrift just not going to be able to guard Jerome Burroughs when he gets that deep in the lane. Two fouls on. Justin Hawkins has forced him to the bench. One of the reasons we're probably seeing Zelko right now, or Demetrius for that matter. To see how Leper does on defense. And that time he gives up a drive and a bucket to Ryan Fultz. Donzo still with a nine point lead and have looked good throughout the course of the first half of the first half. That time they turn it over. And the Ravens gonna give it right back. 
<laughs> Tom Slider saying in here, you're going to throw that to our worst ball handler from half court. So. Not pleased with the uh, pass selection that time by his team. Downs have taken care of the basketball so far tonight. Four turnovers they, as DeWitt Scott misses on the jumper, but four turnovers I guess isn't fantastic, but when you're coming off a, a game in which you uh, had 22, I guess it looks a lot better. Vandergriff to Foltz. Now Van tried to get the bounce pass inside to Dabney. Couldn't quite get a paw on it. And checking back in, Holiday. Rodney Holiday. Has five early points in this game, and as he's done all season, continues to lead the Ravens. But they need a run here, because IPFW has played well and has built an early nine point lead here at the Coliseum. Lob inside to Egerich, over a defender, can't get it to go with the foul, but he'll go to the line to shoot two. That foul gonna come against Brandon Coffer. Tommy, I mean, there's such a size differential now between IPFW and Anderson that they're trying to take advantage of that. That's the last two passes inside, taking advantage of Burroughs and, and Zelko, but uh, I've been really happy with the the intensity that IPFW has shown in both rotations he's had the game so far. They're moving the ball well in the half court, as you mentioned. They're getting great shot looks after five or six passes in the half court. They run their primary and secondary break, and they're playing great half court defense. So it's been a great effort so far. Zelko able to knock in both and build on what you said about the size. Tallest guy on the Anderson roster stands at 6'5", and he hasn't even been in the game so far tonight. So. Definite size advantage for the Dons. Holiday not worried about the size at all as he goes up against the bigger Burroughs, but that didn't work out. Here's Scott. He's money from the wing. He is squaring up so well. His shoulders are square to the basket. He's coming off his curl moves extremely well. He's very, very confident with that shot right now. Biggest lead of the night at 14 for IPFW. Here's Vincent Van. Comes off the high screen. Here's Dabney once again. He has not been able to find it, but this time he gets it to go over Zelko with a foul. Coach Fife didn't really like that call. That's the first foul called tonight on, on Zelko. Actually, you know, I take that back. They called that on Burroughs. Hmm. Sure. I don't know where he found that call. Yeah, because it it was Zelko that was bodying him up, but according to the scores, it goes against Burroughs. Three-point play completed by Dabney. Ravens extending their pressure here a little bit in the full court. Caused a little problems for the Macedons here. They weren't ready for it. And timeout called by Coach Dane Fife, wanting to talk it over because they were in danger of a uh, backcourt violation. And that's one of the frustrating things from a coaching standpoint. In the scouting report, you know, over and over again, they're going to look to do a little token pressure, if you will, on a full court basis after a score, particularly after a free throw. They threw that at him and we weren't ready. Well, I think that um, you know, as you look at the first 11 minutes of this game, Overall, though, outside of maybe that possession, the Dons seem to have come out focused and building upon what you were saying, which, you know, is not always easy to do when you're facing a Division III opponent and uh, and you, you feel like it's going to be able to be a game in which you can get a W. I've been impressed with the team's focus, but I guess when you need a win as badly as the Dons do, you're going to be ready against no matter who you play at this yeah, point. Good point. Demetrius, baseline, and one! Strong move by Demetrius Johnson. He continues to develop after uh, spending the first part of the year with injury problems, and he's really tried to get himself back into shape and is still trying to get himself back into game shape 
That can be tough to do in, in mid-season form, but. He's a real key cog for us to go for that 15 wins uh, for the season. You know, with Q sitting in there with uh, a boot on his leg and not knowing when that's gonna come back, but uh, Demetrius is really key to the season as we go down the stretch run here. Yeah, he's coming off eight points and six assists in the loss to Wright State, so slowly but surely coming on. Couldn't hit on the free throw on that last trip down though to complete the three point place. Lead stays at 13 for the Dons and that time he had Holiday who despite being outsized and here's Scott, nice offensive rebound. Zelko. And great pass, great pass inside by Burroughs. Great anticipation, great awareness. You know, he's played 12 minutes already, and he's just done a great job on both ends of the court. Absolutely. Runner in the lane, won't go for Fultz, and here is Leppert. And he's the first one down the court now in the fast break. Oh, could not handle the pass, re-corrals, and gets it to go. Just a great effort, just a great effort. Absolutely hustling all over the floor right now, Jerome Burroughs and Tom Slider wants a timeout, talk this thing over, 30-second variety, the Dons are now up 15 points, and let's just build upon what you're, you were talking about, Bill, with Burroughs and his fantastic play. You know, he continues to get more confident, and we start to see the player that he might be able to come. You know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's, too. It's a huge responsibility, leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Out of the timeout here at the Coliseum, Don's in the midst of a run which has put them up 15 points in this game. Ravens looking to answer. Three ball on the way, won't go for Stottler. Zelko putting it on the floor. Wise decision to pull it back out, set things back up. Leper, here's Perkins. Perkins continues to struggle from the field. Fultz almost walked. Here's Holiday, gets into the lane, kicks out. This is Nick Cochran in the game for the first time. A six foot senior from Bluffton. Five on the shot clock. Shot up and no good by Holiday. Really forced that and, and hurried it, I should say, with only two on the shot clock. Important for the Dons to finish strong in this last 6.30 of the half. Cross court pass, a bad one and may have been partially deflected. Ill advised pass by Johnson. Here's Cochran. Three rolls around and in. Timeout, Dane Fife, and you can see, not pleased. Turnover turns into a three-point play. That's the kind of frustration that can really stop your momentum. Another 30-second timeout, and the frustration, you know, this was something that Coach Fife was talking uh, with me about this afternoon. He said, you know, it seems like time in and time out, whether it be on the defense or offensive end, it seems like we got four guys doing exactly what we want them to do and one guy that's not and it continual keeps on hurting us that, we, uh, that we're having that problem with that one guy. Those mental lapses where you can't sustain a 10 or 12 minute run hurts and that's a situation whereby suddenly then kids want to play the minutes but they've got to look at rotations and we're what seven or eight man rotation is going to give you the most consistency in the ball game. Zelko Egerick from the corner, the big fella, 6'9", out of Croatia, and he's shown all year long that he can step back and pop the three. 
There's another player, Tommy, that's really gotten a lot of confidence in the last four or five games. Uh, you can see it on his face. He comes into the game, he's playing great defense, uh, blocks out well, he's run the court well, can knock down a three, hedging out front on the defensive side of it. He and Burroughs has really given IPFW a different look from their front line. Uh, Absolutely. He makes his 11th three of the game, and we have a timeout. Uh, should, I should say 11 three of the season. But we have a timeout on the floor, and we will be right back. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's, too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone to, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. First possession out of the timeout. This is Vandergriff, five on the shot clock, blocked by Tyler Best from behind with three seconds left on the shot clock, as you can see at the top of your screen there. Dabney gonna check back in very quickly for Coach Slider here. He's gonna inbound the ball. No, now they decide to let Cochran do it. Here's Cochran, Fultz coming wide open. Easy shot from the block, and you know, that shoot around today, Saw them working on that play over and over again, and Coach Fife is really frustrated down here at the other end. But he's got to be pleased with that effort by Best. Got to be so frustrating as a coach when you go over something time and time again and you're still getting hurt by it. Well, and there's absolutely no excuse. 14 games into the season, when, you know, when you've got that kind of mental lapses with a scouting report and an emphasis in practice and a walkthrough and what have you, there's absolutely no excuse. And then when you get no minutes, then... Uh... Mm, double dribble called on Dabney. We go back over to IPFW. Yeah, it's, it's definitely got to be frustrating. And uh, it's something that Coach has dealt with throughout the course of, of this year and working with trying to get <coughs> all of these guys on the same page. And they're not quite there yet, but... He's got high hopes they can be. Scott, wow, he is playing well, and you mentioned it earlier. That shot has never looked so pretty as no. it does right now. He has got great lift on the basketball. He's getting really square in his shot shoulder-wise, and it's just perfect, perfect form. Already 11 points tonight. Four of six shooting. Three ball on the way, not even close for Stadler, but saved out of bounds, and Cochran in NBA three, barely draws rim. Here come the Dons, back the other way. Perkins to Egerich, three ball is good. 20 point lead. Really need to watch a player like that develop. You know, he's come into a real strange situation a year ago, and to watch his growth from a physical and mental standpoint's been terrific. Yeah, I remember before the season even started, Coach, and nice backdoor cut that time by Holiday. They drew both defenders in, and that left Holiday to roam free on the baseline. But uh, talking to Coach Fife before the season even started, and he had very high hopes for what Z could do this year. Perkins into the lane. Floater won't go, gets his own rebound. Tries to kick out, finally is able to, to Johnson. Fresh 35, and the Dons will set things back up. Here's Scott. Boy, triple teamed best on the lob pass. 
and a foul called down low. The Ravens really done a great job of scouting in the interior game on uh, IPFW because Tyler's been triple team just about on every inbound pass. Downs will have the ball with an 18 point lead when we come back on the other side of this break. 40 to 22 your score here in the first half. Everything you need, paper, pencils. We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean and drain your boat, motor and live wells and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. It is Mastodon scores and stats. You can go to the World Wide Web and go Mastodons.com. Click on teams, players, programs, the official site of IPFW Athletics, Mastodons.com. All right, back here to live action at the Coliseum. Downs with the ball here. Looking to finish the half strong after the first 17 minutes that have been very strong, Mr. Hensley, and Perkins goes high off the glass and in. It was a great read by uh, the point guard to see Perkins inside with the mismatch. He had about seven inches on that player. Stadler out here on the wing. Johnson with that wide wingspan. He's another long player that uh, Coach Fife has brought in here. Again, if, if we'd have had Johnson earlier, you know, from an injury standpoint, in Q consistently, that's really hurt his rotations. Mm -hmm. But get those two back in the mix here. We've got seven or eight guys. Another square by Scott. He is so confident right now with that three-point shot. They say a big toe was on the line, although I didn't see it. They're going to call either. that one a two. <laughs> He's five for seven from the two-point line and three for five from the three-point line. Yeah, they... Uh, yeah, I have, he's always had a great stroke, but I have not seen it look this pretty uh, maybe in the entire time he's been here in Fort Wayne. You know, having you come off the bench tonight, I don't know if it's a situation where you saw the game, how it kind of came to him, and he didn't for, hasn't forced anything at all, but maybe that's a rotation where he's better coming off the bench, getting a look at the game and the feel for things before... Uh, get there, get there! On, here's Dabney, stolen away by Burroughs down low. There is Jerron, just picked up his second foul down there on the other end. Actually checked that, now they changed it to Scott. And here's Perkins, his second straight drive off glass. And the Dons continue to look solid here in the first half. And they're still bringing defensive pressure into half court, so. Foltz, Vandergrift down to Dabney. Dabney has had position all night, but that has been the result. He just can't get a turnaround shot to fall. And here is another one. That one a little off. Almost got the great roll, but here's Burroughs. Blocked from behind by Dabney. Van, Foltz in the corner. Fight for it on the floor. Dabney finds a cutting holiday, and Burroughs going to be called for the goal 10. Downs with a 22 point lead here. We're under a minute to go here in the first half from the Coliseum. IPFW against Anderson. Get through that token pressure that we were talking about. 
Not a problem. Perkins kicking. Johnson gets it out the best. Tyler nails. Another long two. Great dribble drive and kick. Just a nice, nice play. Good decisions all around. Jakari doesn't try to force it hanging in the air there. This is likely the last possession of the half. This is Foltz. NBA three. Line drive shot right in there. Here's Scott at midcourt. Pulls up. It'll be good and it goes. And you know it goes. Oh, they call a long two once again. Boy, this guy's all over that line. Nonetheless, pretty shot to end the half for IPFW. They take a 50 to 27 lead into the locker room. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about this first half, go over some highlights as well as the stats. We'll break it all down when we come back here on the other side of this break. I guess I'm like most kids, I work hard, I go to class, and I want a degree that's going to mean something. I had offers from other universities, but I wanted the best out of my college choice. I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it. Student housing, Division I sports, I found it all right here at IPFW. Hey, this is my university, my life, so it's got to feel right. I'm really glad I chose IPFW. I love it here. <laughs> Go to their website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Nothing gets my blood pumping more than a packed stadium, fans cheering, and the swish of a perfect basket. When I was diagnosed with colon cancer, it became an eerie silence. Early detection helped me, and it can help you too. Today, colon cancer can be treated with minimally invasive surgery, which will get you back in the game sooner than open surgery. I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Michael Harris, who's joined me in the fight. Good one, Coach. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, Coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on. Shalom. Jam. Shalom. Hey, you want? Where are you there? The fire bar. Fire. Mir. Shanti. Yep, Changyokdi. We all want the same thing. Peace. And Rotary Clubs Sola. are making it happen. Lucky. Ha ha hu through international scholarships for young people to promote peace and understanding La around the world. Rotary. Humanity in motion. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat. Wait, what is this? Capsicum anum? Agaricus bisporus? Huh? Allium sepa? Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions? Eat your pizza, man. Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Halftime here at the Memorial Coliseum, IPFW, right at the 50 point mark here at halftime. They are cruising over Anderson, 50 to 27. Tommy Shegler with you, along with Bill Hensley here at the half. We are going to take a look at uh, some of the stats we'll talk about, but at the same time, we want to take you to some of the first half highlights and talk a little bit about how we ended up at this score that we are at here at halftime and it really started with Jerron Burroughs and and his play on the inside and really the Dons hitting the boards early on there's Chris Perkins hitting on a foul line jumper and there is Burroughs inside he had a great half really the story of the half we continue to talk about outside of some great defensive intensity the play of DeWitt Scott continuing for the Dons. He has been lights out with 15 points. Justin Hawkins had a couple of early fouls forcing him to the bench, but there's Scott again. He has been great. Hit three from behind the arc, and this not one of Zelko's uh, 
fancier highlights, but he was great as well. There's another play from Burroughs. Uh, Ten points for Zelko getting back to him. Six points for Burroughs. IPFW has just dominated play on both sides. Here's Zelko from behind the arc. He is two for two from outside. And boy, the big guy, as we talked about, another one that the confidence level seems to be up. Just turned into a great player. Shikari Johnson couldn't hit, but Tyler Best there to clean up the garbage. So really some fun highlights here for IPFW, something that they have not had a chance to look at in the last several games. They came into this game here against Anderson tonight, riding a three-game losing streak and trying to get off the schneid. And it looks like they're well on their way to doing that as another Scott outside jumper and then a couple nice drives at the end of the half from Chris Perkins went high off the window two different times there in the latter stages of the first half we've arrived at halftime 50 to 27 our final score and the crowd here at the Memorial Coliseum pleased with what they've seen so far from their Mastodons and apparently joined some great food from the uh, concession stand. I want to get one of those ice cream sandwiches here at the break. So I'm going to take that commercial break now and get myself an ice cream sandwich. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of numbers. We'll go over the first half stats when we return IPFW basketball on my TV. I've gone away to a college where the class size is small. I've gone away to a college with a beautiful campus. I've gone away to a college that cares about diversity. I've gone away to a college where I get to live in my own apartment instead of living in a dorm room. I've gone away to a college that really isn't that far away at all. I go to IPFW. IPFW. I go to IPFW. To find out more about college life at IPFW, go to our website. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Living with diabetes is the pets. When I wake up, the first thing I have to do is check my blood sugar. I just want to feel like all the other kids without pricking my fingers or injecting myself with insulin. Diabetes is rough on my whole family. When I was diagnosed, my mom couldn't stop crying. But imagine a cure. Right now, as many as three million children and adults are living with type one diabetes. They will never outgrow it. Some will face complications like kidney failure, blindness, and heart disease. That's why the science the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation is supporting is so critical. Imagine a cure. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you want to get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Get it balanced. Oh, you just uh, need to do better. Stick it under the mattress. <laughs> you want Getting plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. While progress should never come to a halt, there are many places it should never come to at all. So we work locally with communities, businesses, and people like you to save precious places around the world forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. Back at the Coliseum, there's your halftime score, IPFW cruising here at the half, and we are going to take a look at the halftime stats right now. First, we'll go over the leading scorers from each squad, and uh, then we'll take a little bit of a further look at deeper inside of these numbers. Looking at those numbers, Holiday, we told you about him in the pregame for the Ravens. We knew that he was going to run the show from a uh, scoring standpoint for Anderson, and he has done that tonight. Showed some athleticism early on with some uh, nice three-point plays and a, 
ability to get to the hole, um, you know, despite not being as, uh, or probably being oversized a lot of times inside against a taller Don's team. But uh, Scott there, we've talked at length about him and Egerich, and uh, both have played outstanding first halves, and uh, Scott's just red hot hand continues. And there's a reason that you can uh, continue to have a red hot hand when you're getting a lot of good dishes coming your way. No question, Tommy. When you look at the season stats uh, year to date, uh, IPFW has been averaging 16 assists for the game. They've got 16 assists in the first half. And I think Dean's got to be very, very pleased about the way his offense has been so efficient, both in transition and the half court. Uh, but 16 assists to only six assists for Anderson is a huge, huge differential. The other thing that strikes me is they've shot the ball extremely well. I think the shot selection has been good because they've had great inside-outside action, great ball reversal, and they've shot 67% the first half, and 50% obviously were led by Scott from the three-point line. So the shooting numbers are up, and those are the kind of things that can be a springboard again for the second half of the season. Get that shooting prowess going, but what it really impressed me is they came out mentally ready to go right from the get-go. They set the tone defensively. They set the tone to run the court in their transition offense. Uh, Zelko's been terrific off the bench. Burroughs has been outstanding. Now, I, I thought he played almost 20 minutes, but he's only had 15. But he was full of energy uh, on both ends of the court all the, throughout the whole game. So I, I think this has been a real good base for uh, Coach Fife tonight in terms of seeing what his rotations are going to be the second half of the season. Again, we get uh, Johnson healthy and we get Carruthers back. It makes his rotation uh, a lot more simpler in terms of just who can contribute when. And another thing that uh, jumps out at me there is even though as we discussed in the first half this is not a big Anderson team as the Dons come back out on the floor you know it's not a big uh, Anderson roster but you know they, they rebound the ball well and I think that since that's been a struggle for the Dons at times this year probably something that Coach Fife was worried about headed into tonight's matchup. You know, these guys may be small, but they know how to rebound. And uh, right now, the Don's dominating on the, the glass uh, to a tune of 19 to seven. So everything positive, really, when you look at it from IPFW standpoint here at the break. And uh, we are going to take our last halftime break. When we come back, we will have second half uh, action starting here from the Coliseum. We'll go over few other things the Dons need to do to continue to keep this lead here against the Ravens. We'll be right back. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. When it comes to dogs, cats, and kids, sharing just comes naturally. They share toys, their beds, even their favorite snacks. But pets and people can share other things as well like disease. Zoonotic diseases are illnesses that can be transmitted from animals to humans, like leptospirosis, or diseases that affect both people and pets, like Lyme disease. Fortunately, you can help reduce the risk by visiting your veterinarian. Your veterinarian can help protect against zoonotic disease and potentially harmful parasites. Most important, a wellness exam from your veterinarian twice a year can help detect, treat, or prevent health problems before they become serious. So share affection, not illness, and ask your veterinarian about zoonotic disease protection for all your loved ones. A message from the American Veterinary Medical Association and your local veterinarians. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit mybluestar.org and pass it on.
We are getting closer to tip off here in the second half and getting the second half underway here at the Coliseum. 50 to 27 are halftime score. IPFW in full control of this one with a 23 point lead at the break. Some little one enjoying the hot pretzel. We gotta stop showing so many shots of uh, food, Bill. <laughs> I haven't had dinner yet, and tell you what. My stomach's growling, huh? <laughs> it's looking good out there. So, getting ready to start the second half. Bill, let's talk a little bit about what you want to see. You know, put yourself in Coach Fife's shoes. You have a sizable lead, one in which you're probably pretty confident that you can keep. What do you want to see happen? What do you want to get from this second half? Well, I'm sure what he's done in the locker room is breaking down the game in two halves, the first half and the second half. And obviously there was a lot of pauses coming in the first half. But in the second half, the first five minutes is going to set the tone for how they play. They set that tone the first five minutes in the first half. He wants to emphasize that first five minutes. Then he wants to emphasize the things that got this lead with their passing, the assists, the rebounding, their intensity, their, their, their effort on both ends of the court. And their teamwork. I mean, it was just a, a real chemistry issue in terms of poetry and motion to watch their half-court offense as efficient it was. So those are the things he's still trying to emphasize. That it's 20 minutes here. Let's get a 40-minute game here. Let's get a win. Let's go on and build something for Western Illinois. Somebody back there adjusting the video. All right. Ready to get the second half underway. Anderson will work right here in front of us. Lob pass into Holiday, And boy, he has impressed me on a number of plays tonight with his athleticism. Alley oop, backdoor pass to start the second half and then a turnover by the Don. So what you were saying, Bill, of wanting to set a tone early on, the first two possessions, Don's not doing that. Exactly. It's uh, always frustrating for a coach because those first five minutes are a key, usually in how you're going to play the rest of the game. Here's Van. He has not been able to really get his game going tonight. He's significantly outsized as Vandergrift cannot hit from the foul line. Here comes Don's back the other way. Hawkins in transition. Three is good. Great look in the primary break. Again, all three guys are down the court very, very fast. Uh, Burroughs is inside in the block, but a great look for Hawk on the outside, and Perkins got it to him. Here's Holiday. Bounce pass to Dabney, and the Dons come up with it. Got a two-on-one the other way. Three-on-one now. Perkins takes it all by himself and hits on the lay-in. Nice scooping lay-in off glass for Chris Perkins. I think it's interesting, though, that, that Dane's still looking to bring Scott off the bench, and I think that might be a look we see the rest of the season. He was so in control the first half, and he wow. didn't start in the second half. So I think it might be a look that to bring that energy and high, high intensity off the bench with Scott in the shooting. Well, I can tell you that I know that he came off the bench uh, in the Wright State game, and it seemed to work in that game as well. well I think he's found uh, something. Yeah, I mean... Uh, and boy, it's always nice, no matter what roster you have, no matter what team you're talking about, if you can have some kind of spark to come off the bench, and that can help you so much as Dabney drops in the first of two free throws. Can't hit on the second. All right, Bill. Now, last time we did a game, it was against Marygrove, one in which the Dons won that one, 100 to 48. Burrows down low, no problem. Nice pass to Tyler. Great interior passing, just a great, great ball reversal down inside. Okay, now I asked you with about the seven minute mark in that one, whether or not the Dons were gonna hit 100. You said yes, they were 100 right on the mark. So I figure I gotta make it a little bit more difficult for you this time as Vandergrift hits a three. They had right at 50 at halftime. Did they get to 100 tonight? Yes, sir. All right, All right. I'm gonna hold you to that. Here's Johnson up top. Don's up 24 points. 
Get there, get there, Cofer. Get there, Cofer. Being patient on this particular possession. And driving to the hoop and getting fouled is Jakari Johnson. That is going to be Brandon Cofer's second foul on the evening. This lineup is really intriguing to me because it really gives an IPFW a different look than they've shown the first, first half of the season. With Hawkins and Burroughs and Best in there, they're obviously a much bigger lineup. And there's some real matchup problems, again, with Hawkins and Burroughs, depending on how who's going to defend. Um, so I think that's a great look for them. And here comes Scott off the bench. Burroughs will come out this time. And Jakari nails the second one as well. Vandergriff tries another three ball. This one's short. Five for the rebound and a hold going to be called on Justin Hawkins down on the floor before the shot. That's going to be the third on Hawk, however. He has not been able to get into the flow of this game and hampered by foul trouble the whole time. Here is Van, gets best in the air, gets into the lane, can't get the jumper to drop. Dons look to run, Ravens back on defense though. Perkins, long two on the way, no. Followed his shot well, knew it was off, but then stepped on the baseline. Kind of an out of control possession there by the point guard. See, that's the kind of consistency that Coach Fife's looking for in his point guard to get the offense started. Chris, the last two times, been down looking for his shot versus trying to get that offense started. From the first half, we got that offense started, made the five or six passes, got easy buckets inside, good ball reversal. Kofer kicking, Vandergriff, three, no, not even close. Johnson, deep three for DeWitt. Oh, ho, ho, man, if he had hit that one. Hawkins, good fight, nice put back. That's the thing about Justin Hawkins, just never gives up on the play. He's made a career here at IPFWF out of that. 61-33, the score. Downs up by 28 points right now. Fultz long on the three, and right now Anderson just forcing up a lot of threes, trying to get back into this one, and they're not the best looks necessarily. Downs will be content fully to be patient on offense the rest of the way out and get good looks and just continue to pick this Anderson defense apart. That time Johnson, though, short on the long ball. Van up top. Now Vandergrift. Tyler trying to keep up with the smaller guy through traffic. That seems to be a bit of a mismatch. Here's Holiday. Holiday throws up an air ball. And boy, every single one of Anderson's shots so far this half have been ugly. Here's DeWitt. There it is. You know, those are great, but again, our offense has not started on the inside at all the second half yet. You know, you can live it by the three and die by the three. And then, you know, the last time when Johnson was down the court, he had a wide open lane to drive, dribble drive, he took the outside shot. Those are things that coaches just drop, drive you crazy on that we're selling for a jump shot versus running our, our offense the way it should. There's Perkins. The runner won't go. Coach Fife doesn't like that one either. Ball goes out of bounds. Going to be the Ravens' ball when we come back from this break. 64-33. Don's in control. Mom, Dad, you know we love kids, and I've made a decision that will totally change my life. Cameron's, too. It's a huge responsibility leading someone into, who knows, communication or science or math. That's what life's all about, right? Learning so you can pass on knowledge to younger minds. Dad, Mom, I want to be a teacher.
Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Life is good, but with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy with affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. We're getting beaten internationally. All right, here's DeWitt Scott as his hot hand continues to be just scorching. This is a miss, but Justin Hawkins there for the nice put back. And then on the next possession down, Scott drilled in another three ball. He's hit four threes on the night. He is seven of 11 from the field, 18 points. Justin Hawkins, by the way, with that putback has eight points and four boards. And we're back to live action here at the Coliseum. Don's in full control of this ball game. Fight on the floor. Jump ball called. Don's gonna get the arrow to go their way. Demetrius Johnson back in the game. Here's Pat Lepper also, first action of the second half. Johnson puts it on the floor, quickly gets to the rack. And but see, there's the difference. Jakari Johnson had a wide open lane three possessions ago, didn't take it there. Dimitri then had the lane, took it, made the easy bucket inside. But uh, that's a great recognition. Foltz draws the foul in the lane from Lepper. You know, we were talking the first half, Tommy, you could see in the the face of Burroughs and the confidence that he's developed over the last two or three months, but you can see the opposite of Pat Lepper. You know, Pat came in first couple games, saw the enthusiasm, you know, intensity, et cetera. He seems to have lost that confidence. And again, it probably starts from his shot. Where his shot's not dropping down, then all of a sudden he starts losing his confidence and where he can help the team. But you can see on his face that he just doesn't have the confidence he had as the season started. Yeah, he's only averaging about eight minutes a game as of right now and uh, not even three points a game at this point in the season, or I should say just at three points uh, a game. And I couldn't agree more because actually when I heard about these transfers that were coming in, Juco guys, Leper, can't remember who the person was that was telling me, but Leper was the first one as Demetrius draws a foul. Uh, he was the first one mentioned on the list. So, exactly. I mean, they, they were very optimistic about what he could do. And just so far, as you see him talking to Coach Fife, uh, so far this season, things have not worked out for him. Yeah, it's a big transition from junior college ball to Division I basketball. And at the same time, you know, the body, the physical differences, too. And I think, you know, Pat's got to get them in the... Uh, weight room this spring and summer and, and, and do some things physically to kind of beef up working that explosiveness and quickness footwork wise particularly laterally that will help him confidence wise and defensive end to set the tone in offensively. That last foul was on Brandon Coffer and that's his fourth personal so he's going to come to the bench here and the only player really in serious foul trouble. Neil Young uh, the basketball player, not the singer, just checked in for the first time for Anderson out of Muncie. And fight for it, fight for it. Zelko comes up with it. Gets it to his point guard. Here's Demetrius. No look. Burroughs almost lost it. Fouled on the way up. Not sure that could have gone against two different defenders. They're going to call it on Ryan Fultz. We get a healthy Demetrius Johnson can really make a big difference in this ball club because I just really like his game and uh, he's got a great awareness. Uh, he's calm about it. First time we've seen Kyle Savely. Yeah, Savely hopping up off the bench and his first action of the night. We're talking at halftime on when we were going to see him get into the ball game tonight. And uh, so the spark plug checks in. Always fun to watch, even when it's ugly. <laughs> Sometimes you can get a little, little carried away. All right, so here's Fultz. Cochran, 
Decided he better kick it out. And the intensity is still there on a defensive uh, standpoint. Demetrius got caught leaning there. Fultz was able to drive on him, but uh, you know, uh, the, the Don's still right up in the face of the Ravens. You know, even though there's a big physical difference in terms of uh, IPFW and Anderson, Anderson's still playing hard. I mean, they're running their cuts hard, they're running the court hard, they're playing hard. Fultz above his season average, as you can see there, at nine points tonight. Now let's make it ten. Again, showing that full court pressure. Again, after free throws, made free throws. But this time we're ready for it. Demetrius now brings it back up top and sets up the offense. And Savely zigged when Zelko thought he was going to zag. Bolts on the wing, guarded by Johnson. And boy, when you see Demetrius Johnson and Fultz right next to each other, <laughs> you see the physical difference in these two teams. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, those are those are both guards and uh, should be similar. You don't see it as much right now with Young and Savely right next to each other, but uh, you know, just really Anderson, tough task to come in and as they throw it away come into IBFW's building and come out of here with with a win. But even with the disparity in talent, uh, this was a win and is a win that IPFW desperately needed and they needed to play well in doing it and I think uh, of course the jury's still out because we have 12 minutes to go but so far We've seen them. It's nice pass by Johnson. Burroughs is able to save because he wasn't ready for it initially. Save lead. Long two. Good. Well, Kyle needed to come in and get his rhythm going, but it was a great breakdown by uh, Johnson. Dribble drive kick. Yeah, I'd like to see Burroughs uh, as Dabney, once again, a baby, won't fall in the lane. Uh, I'd like to see... Uh, Johnson and Burroughs on the floor a little bit more together and get them on the same page because boy he's made some charge called that time on Demetrius. But uh, some nice no look passes and, and just running of the offense in general for Demetrius Johnson tonight. Timeout on the floor, 71-36. Don's in the quest to get over the century mark once again here at the Coliseum. Do you have everything you need? Paper? Pencils? We only ask that you do your best. And make you a snack. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Back here at the Coliseum, 71-36, IPFW in full control out here on rainy night in Fort Wayne. Tommy, we talked the first half where we had 16 assists, IPFW did. This half we've only had four. You, know, you can see we're just not as efficient in the half court in our offense as we were the first half. But we still got good defensive pressure. That was Zach Gray from Kokomo, Indiana. Hitting on that jumper. It's his first action tonight. Just fresh into the ball game. You're right, though. It's funny, uh, Bill, how 
is Demetrius gets fouled on his way up. Josh Bellamy gonna get whistled for that foul. Uh, but it's funny how a, a number can can kind of point out to you what you're seeing on the floor, and that's absolutely right. That you're right. It looks a little choppy. It doesn't look as smooth as it was going in the first half, and uh, that may be to be expected. But uh, I have enjoyed what I've seen here from the young man at the line, Demetrius Johnson. He's a real stabilizing factor for him, I think. Uh, but I think those are things like you mentioned that. Coach Fife will take a look and say, look at the difference between our efficiency and our offense the first half and second half. And they'll break that down in the film and show that to the guys to say, hey, listen, that extra pass, getting our offense started, uh, those are the things. And look what happens. It yields uh, a lot of scoring from a lot of different people. Burroughs almost had the block, but Force a altering of the shot. Now Johnson the other way. Runner won't go. Oh, Burroughs almost a follow-up dunk. Here come the Ravens, back the other way. This is the athletic holiday. Into the lane, can't get it to go. Put back, no. Foul call. <laughs> Pat Lepper called for the foul. It's gonna be Matt McCuller going to the line. McCuller, the tallest player on the Anderson roster, 6'5". He's a freshman. Out of Gas City, Indiana, we mentioned early on in the broadcast, Jason is just joining us. Every player on this uh, Anderson roster from the Hoosier State. So a lot of guys from Indianapolis <coughs> have a Bluffton native in Nick Cochran. You guys may remember him, but quite a few Indianapolis area players. 73-40, the score here. Don's all over the Ravens. Tom Slider wanted to travel, probably should have gotten one on DeWitt Scott. Best thought about the three. 16 on the shot clock. Tries to get the pass out. Was able to go right around and lost control of it on his way up. Leper, three, he needed that. Sure did. But again, Pat was squared up nice, ready to catch and shoot. 36-point advantage for IPFW here. As Coach Slider starts to get some new players into the ball game. McCullough, as we just mentioned, also seeing some action. Zach Gray. Here's McCullough. Had Burroughs in the air, but then couldn't get around him. Fultz, once again, Burroughs, long arms in the way of that shot. And ball goes off the Ravens and over to IPFW. Egerich back in the ball game. Relieves Tyler Best. It's Coach Slider. You know what's also good? Burroughs doesn't even look like he's winded. You know, he's played real hard. He's ran the court hard. And he doesn't look like he's winded, which is great. Here's Scott. Leper shot fake. Quick pass inside. A nice one to Burroughs. Didn't quite have his legs underneath him to be able to throw it down, but two nonetheless. And kick ball going to be called on Savely. All right, here we go. Holiday. To McCuller. Here's Young. Young the fadeaway on Savely. Good. Nice shot. Good defense, too. Just a good shot. Here's Burroughs kicking out. One extra pass. That was nice. Outstanding. Great inside outside action. Great ball reversal. That's the way you want to run your offense. And very efficient. Yeah, that's exactly the way that it should look. And another good look for Leper leads to a nice confidence building three. Dons continue to build upon the lead. Once again at the big at largest it's been all night. Uh, Zelko called out of bounds as he started to steal that ball away. 
39 point lead, 746 left to go here at the Coliseum when we come back. What's it like when you hear your calling? Will you remember where you were? Will you ignore it? Or will you listen? What if it calls you to go halfway around the world? To share your skills? To serve people you've never met. To do things you never thought you could. What will you do when you hear your calling? Peace Corps, life is calling. How far will you go? Tommy Shegler along with Bill Hensley here at the Memorial Coliseum. 81-42 as you see the score. IPFW, I think it's safe to say, going to end. And we have a whistle away from the ball. And it's going to be a hold on Terry Jenkins, who is fresh into the game. The walk-on freshman, Adam Muncy. Uh, Safe to say the Dodgers are going to end their three-game slide, I'd say. Much-needed win. Bring them to 5-11 and 11 on the year. My man, Mr. Bill Hensley, though, says 15 wins, still a possibility. I believe in the team. I think they've got all the elements to make this thing work, barring any injuries. Again, it's key to get Q back and obviously get Johnson uh, on a consistent basis. But uh, I think they've got an eight or nine rotation that's going to surprise people the second half here. Yeah, I agree with you. If you get uh, Demetrius up and running at full speed and Q back, you got a lot of different guys you can go to if you coach five, and somebody's going to be hot. Jenkins, three won't go. It's Armand. Tried to save it. Jenkins, the steal. Kind of sloppy play both ways. Armin Ademi also in the game for the first time for IPFW. Tried to save that last ball that almost went out of bounds. Coach Fife really starting to clear the bench. Jenkins, three ball good. Forty point lead for IPFW and inching closer and closer to the 100 point mark. Rodney Holiday in the lane. Foul line, line drive, jumper by Greg Allison is good. Allison into the game for the first time. A big fella at 6'10", 285 pounds, and I should correct myself about saying the McCuller was the tallest player on the Anderson roster. I failed to notice Anderson or Allison down there at 6'10". Jenkins, three won't go. A Demi fouled underneath. Old going to be called down low, I believe. Going to go on Holiday, and it does. Ramon, Ramon Hogue checking in to the game for the first time, as well for Aaron Anderson as both coaches starting to explore their bench at this point. Ademi fighting underneath there for every rebound that comes off and steal by Savely. Here's Kyle. Anderson back here on the other end after the steal by Savely. Turnaround shot not even close for Young. Actually check that, Zach Gray. 
Zelko thought about the three, instead goes to Armand. He can't hit on the baby. Ball deflected off of Don and will stay here on this side. Demetrius takes out Lepper. Lepper looks winded. He does. You know, all these guys practice hard. It's a long season, and it's good to see some guys get some minutes here they have not gotten in the last couple games. So it's always good from a morale standpoint. Well, it's different practicing hard. And uh, the difference when you get into the game, the juices are flowing a lot more, and you seem to get fatigued a lot a lot quicker. But you're right, getting, the, getting that effort that you put forth in practice to get the reward of getting on the floor always nice. Jenkins, three. See that points in the paint, IPFW. 30 to 16 advantage, just one of the many advantages <coughs> up and down the stats. Taking advantage of their size. Savely, the steal, no look, and a block going to be called on Gray. <laughs> See, Ter Terry Jenkins was hurt early in the year, and I think there's another player, Indiana player out of Muncie Central High School, uh, was in the state finals two out of three years. He's another guy that I think working hard this summer is going to come in and help them next year. Uh, but he's just now getting his legs and his confidence under him as a freshman. Uh, I tell you what, if it wasn't for uh, a couple guys uh, by the names of Odin and Conley, uh, that Muncie Central team that they had the last couple years knocked Northside out uh, in uh, the latter stages of the playoffs a few years back. Uh, that was a special team that they had. It probably would have gone down as a lot more of a special team if, if uh, Lawrence North hadn't been so strong. Timing's everything, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Demetrius knocks in the free throw. Looks like nice. you are going to be right about that 100-point mark once again. 2-0 and oh on your prognostication. Thanks to the Dons, they're uh, very efficient this half in their half-court offense. Still shooting almost 60% for the game, so... Yeah, that is it. That is way above the season. About 20 uh, points above the other normal season average. Here, nice hustle play by Zelko. <laughs> Boy, Demetrius on the other end. You had a shot of midcourt, though. <laughs> there was just a pile of players as now a holding call away from the ball on the inbounds. That's going to go again safely. And we're going to go to shoot one on one, but. Uh, there was a pile of uh, McCuller, Zelko, and Allison <laughs> after that scrap at the midcourt stripe, and there's a lot of a lot of body there. Ramon Hogue, little guy, only 5'7", freshman out of Indianapolis. And he rattles the first one in. <laughs> and Ramon knocks in both. 93-48. Demetrius to Zelko. Three ball, perfect. Again, another smart play by Demetrius. Dribble drives, sees the open man, kicks. Yeah, absolutely, and I, I actually enjoy the fact that Coach Fife leaving Demetrius here. Exactly, in here get his legs back, get yep. some timing going, get that conditioning, game-like situations. Yep, this is perfect for him. Jenkins, Jenkins fires again. He's not shy. Can't hit this time. Here's Gray. Jenkins nicely cuts off the baseline. Ramon getting fancy. Here's Allison Zelko all over him. And three-point play by the big fella. <laughs> Jeff Tungate and Coach Fife seeming to enjoy that just a bit. All smiles here at the Coliseum. 96-52. Down just four points away from breaking the 100-point mark. Pizza! Pizza! Oh, I must eat.
Wait, what is this? Capsicum Anum, Agaricus Bisporus, <gasps> Allium Sepa. Can we eat this? Peppers, mushrooms, and onions. Eat your pizza, man. <laughs> Funny. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Parents, there's something you can do to protect your kids from drugs and alcohol. Combine ground beef with egg, tomato sauce, breadcrumbs, and spices. Bake in an oven-safe pan at 350 for 50 minutes. Serve hot. This is Jamie Lee Curtis. Children who eat dinner with their families are less likely to smoke, drink, or use drugs. <clears throat> so, have dinner together every day. Delicious. A message from CASA, the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University. There's the big fella, Allison. Greg Allison, the nice fadeaway jumper right before the break there. That led us to where we're at right now. Allison at the line trying to complete the three-point play. Boy, that 54 on his jersey looks awfully small. <laughs> He's a big fella. All right, almost at the three-minute mark. 96-52 is your score. IBFW in absolute control here at the Coliseum. Zelko, three ball on the way in there. Zelko is absolutely perfect from the field. And eight rebounds to go with it. Five for five from the field as Ramon Hogue nails a three, but five for five from the floor, four for four from behind the arc, two for two from the line. Eight rebounds, as Bill said, 16 points for Zelko. That is a line to be proud of. Ademi loses it out of bounds. Going to stay with the Dimes, however. They say it goes off of Allison. Dimes just one point away from the 100-point mark. And just 219 away from their fifth win of the season. Egerich. Whistle on a hand check, possibly. That one goes against Matt McCuller. Sending Zelko to the line. First one good for Z. And he's still perfect. And there's your 100 points. And there's 101. Good, Tommy. We said this is the kind of game that IPFW have to have at the beginning of the game. And they've gotten that. They've gotten good intensity on both ends of the court. They've maintained consistency for 40 minutes. Those are the things Coach Feist is wanting these guys to build upon. I think he's seen some things out of two or three guys that his rotation is going to be settled in now particularly when Q gets back and Demetrius or Demetrius uh, is for sure is back in the lineup. So I think he's a lot of positive things will happen here. So two nice passes by Demetrius and then save Lee, but Demi not able to go or to finish, but he'll go to the line. Armand uh, Jr. Out of Kosovo. First one is good for the big guy. Been used sparingly this year, just three minutes a game. Buddy knocks in both free throws. All right, home stretch here from the Coliseum. Our next broadcast going to be IPFW's actually next home game, and it's going to be coming up on Tuesday the 9th. 
against Western Illinois, and Armand not able to complete the three-point play down low. He'll go again to the line. Western Illinois, a memorable game for IPFW back on November 21st. It took five, count them, five overtimes before the Dons were able to come away with a 2.97-95 win. So that will be a rematch that we will be looking forward to. Tommy, even, at, even during that free throw break, Coach Fife is still coaching. He brings Jenkins over and Savely and Johnson talking about their transition offense. So, again, still a lot of learning things, even though it's a lopsided victory. There's a lot of things still picking up. Teaching-wise, players are learning. There's Hogue. Couple ball fakes, and then Armand says, see ya. Get it out of here. A little unfair. 5-7 against 6-9. That is often the result. Nice inbound play from the Ravens, completed by Josh Bellamy. They run a couple nice sets on out of bounds tonight. Under a minute to go here from the Coliseum, 105-57. On the luxury of being very, very patient of at this point. Ten on the shot clock. Demetrius, some shake and some bake. That's a great crossover. <laughs> yeah, that was nice. <laughs> that was nice. That was a nice crossover. He's getting his legs under him, I think it's safe to say. Like you said, it's a real key point to bring him back in the game and get some minutes. Again, game minutes, game speed, get his timing and rhythm going. Okay, three ball in there for Gray. And that perhaps will be where we end up. They will dribble it out. 107-59. Going to be your final score here from the Coliseum. IPFW, fifth win of the season. 107-59. Coach Fife, kids smile now, told me this afternoon that the holiday season hasn't been a great one this year. Wanting his team to get back on track and perhaps a big win tonight has done just that for IPFW. Take a break, we come back, talk over how we arrived at 107.59. Look at the final stats here from the Coliseum. We'll be right back. kids I work hard I go to class and I want a degree that's going to mean something I had offers from other universities but I wanted the best out of my college cho choice I wanted a great education and the campus life to go with it student housing division one sports I found it all right here at IPFW hey this is my university my life so it's got to feel right I'm really glad I chose IPFW I love it here <laughs> go to their website Indiana University Purdue University Fort Wayne one university two great names are you in there? What's up? The show's a seven. Whoa. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Welcome back to the Coliseum, 107-59, the final score. IPFW snaps a three-game losing streak and get, gets a much-needed win. Granted, it comes over a Division the three opponent, but this was a win, Bill, that IPFW needed, and IPFW looked good in it. It wasn't just that they outmatched the opponent and therefore they got a W. They came out and played well tonight. And played consistently well for 40 minutes, Tommy. I think that was, like you said, a key point, consistency. They got a lot of contribution from a lot of guys. They played at both ends of the court. 
Uh, the turnover situation was very good. The shooting percentage was outstanding, but the assist that they had from a standpoint of consistently, their offense was very, very efficient tonight. Yeah, they end up with 28 assists. They had 16 at the half. but uh, and That's almost twice what they're averaging for the season. So. Exactly. I mean, I guess the best word is is efficient, as, as you said. I mean, you know, they... They looked very smooth within the uh, the course and throughout the course of this win. Um, it was one in which they executed not only on the offensive end, but I thought defensively the pressure was great. And uh, and it's been one of those things tonight that um, when you look at things, we're going to try to get assistant coach Jeff Tungate in here in a second. And why don't you why don't you hop up, Bill, and, and we'll get coach in here because he just uh, he just arrived and. We might as well do that now while Coach has given us the time. Coach will bring you in. Had an on-camera arrival tonight. <laughs> uh, Coach, you know, we were just talking about the, the efficiency in which this win came at. It was obviously a win that you guys needed to have. Um, and, it, you know, it was against a, a team that you guys probably have quite a bit more talent in. But I thought that a lot more important than that was the fact that you didn't just outmatch the guys, and that's why you won. You came out and you really performed well and executed well tonight. Well, you know, and this game came at a perfect time for us. After we've come off some tough losses and some heartbreaking losses, we really needed a game like this. And, you know, our, our guys did perform, but we still, our defense is still nowhere near where it needs to be. I mean, you know, tonight we were able to get away with a lot of plays just because of our athleticism, but uh, we, we've got to get better on the defensive end. But, you know, our guys, our guys played hard, and, and like you said, it's, even though it's a game you're supposed to win, to come out and do it convincingly, that says a lot about our team. And, and last year, we, we win games like this. We wouldn't come out and convincingly win. Right. I'd like to point out here early on, Rochester, Marygrove, Anderson, all games in which I was here for to do the TV. So Well, you better be here for the next every home <laughs> game from here on out. You guys want to bring me on the road? You know, <laughs> we, we can talk well, after the uh, broadcast. Uh, one, of the, one of the lines that I wanted to point out to you, Zelko Egerich, perfect from the field tonight, nine rebounds. I mean, there were a lot of guys that played well tonight. DeWitt Scott continues with the hot hand, but boy, has it been fun to watch Zelko just grow as a player. Yeah, he's really gotten better at both ends of the floor and, and done a good job for us. He, uh, you know, at shoot around today, he didn't miss. I mean, it was, it was amazing. He just got out there and is just really playing with a lot of confidence right now, and, and, and that showed in the way he shot the ball tonight. And, you know, DeWitt Scott, that's so needed. For, for us to win, DeWitt has to make shots. Yeah. And, and he's playing with a lot of confidence right now the last few games. So hopefully that will continue. And, and hopefully, you know, obviously we got some wide open looks tonight. And we made them. I mean, you yeah. know, we're not going to have necessarily those type of wide open looks the, the rest of the year. But the fact we made them. Yeah, uh, is, it's is, not is, always is, a given. It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So How about when it comes to, um, you, you mentioned the defense. I kind of had the impression that, defensive intensity at least was there tonight you mentioned that you still have a long way to go you guys still aren't pleased there no our, our intensity was it was much better but you know I, and, and I'm not taking away from our guys effort on the defensive end but we got to get smarter there's too many times that we go to help and lose sight of our man and mm -hmm. kick out for wide open threes our help's too deep and then they're getting open looks um, intensity level was there but we're just getting driven way too easy and, and those yes. are some things that we've got to correct because you know, as teams start with, with scouting reports and things, they're going to know to, you know, they can spread right. the floor, drive it, put a shooter on the opposite side, and kick it to their shooter, and then that's something we've got to get better at. But from an intensity standpoint, I agree. Our defensive intensity was good, but now we just got to get smarter at the defensive end. Back to DeWitt real quickly. You bring him off the bench. I noticed you brought him off the bench at Wright State, and maybe you had done it a couple other games that I'm not aware of. Is that the plan from now on? Do you guys feel like he comes off the bench better? Well, he, he had an injury um, a while ago that kind of slowed him up. We missed some practices, and so, you know, he came off the bench, and, and we decided to go with a bigger lineup. And, and going with that bigger lineup, we've gotten off to some good starts with that lineup. And as long as we're getting off to good starts, we don't want to mess That's with that. Right. And the way that DeWitt's shooting the ball, you know, he, he's playing really well off the bench right now. You know, we'll, we'll probably just keep riding that. Um, but the biggest, more than DeWitt coming off the bench, it's more we wanted to go with a bigger lineup so we don't get hurt so bad on the boards and we match up a little bit better. Yeah, the way he's shooting it, don't change a thing. No. Like, same <laughs> socks. Exactly. Don't let him wash his, uh, his jersey. Exactly. <laughs> Keep everything the exact same. Uh, another guy, you mentioned the, the going with the bigger lineup. Another guy that I'm seeing, uh, and we talked about during the broadcast, the confidence seems to just be going – Another notch up every game, Jerome Burroughs, he's just playing great. Yeah, he really is, and, and he's the one that, I mean, he can change shots down low. He can rebound at both ends of the floor for us. He can run the floor, and there's a couple threes we got tonight. The reason we got him is because Jerron ran the floor, mm -hmm. and by him running the floor and sucking the defense in, that opens up chances for our three-point shooters to get shots, and, you know, he, he's really tough to defend down there. You can throw the lob pass to the corner of the, back, of the backboard. He can go up and get it. 
you know, and, and do some things with, with his athleticism that makes us um, makes us hard to guard and, and, and hopefully in, in time makes us a little bit better at the defensive end because of his ability to block shots. Well, I know you guys were looking to this three-game homestand as one in which you could kind of turn things around and it gets off to a good start. We'll join you again on Tuesday for Western I'm going to be here good. for the Western Illinois good. game. And you're going to be here for New Jersey Tech, and you're going to travel to Loyola with us <laughs> to keep this going. Yeah, all right. I can, <laughs> I can be talked into that. Uh, but uh, thanks for your time. Appreciate a good win, though. All right, thank you. All right, we'll be right back. Diabetes is a killer. After I was diagnosed, I didn't feel sick, so I didn't listen to my doctor. Then it struck. I had a heart attack, then a stroke, and I was only 49. People with diabetes are two to four times more likely to suffer a stroke than people without diabetes. And many who survive are severely disabled. Don't let diabetes destroy your life. Learn how to reduce your risk of stroke. Call for your free diabetes survival guide. Warning, ruthless invaders are among us and the future of fishing depends on stopping them dead. Only you can prevent invasive species from spreading before it's too late. Inspect, clean and drain your boat, motor and live wells and properly dispose of invasive species on land, not back in the water. Stop these evil menaces from taking over and threatening our precious outdoor heritage. Inspect, clean and drain. Do your part to halt the silent invasion. Welcome back here to the Coliseum 107.59 and uh, just a great game. We're going to take you to some highlights of the game and uh, then we'll talk over some stats here and a lot of uh, optimistic things to look at and uh, some pleasing things to look at when you see tonight's box score. Um, several different things that you can point out. Let's take a look at uh, some of the stats here or some of the uh, highlights here, I should say, and uh, we'll get to that. Hawkins, Justin Hawkins, continued to uh, play well and scrappy tonight. Shikari Johnson put in some solid minutes as well, uh, kind of out overshadowed by Demetrius Johnson, but uh, that a fantastic set there where they were able to get a couple nice interior passes. DeWitt Scott, boy, talked about him so much. That was the probably the deepest three ball of the night. Uh, Anderson did score here and there. <laughs> There's proof of it. Burroughs. Saving the ball, and Pat Lepper, we mentioned it at the time, he was able to get some nice minutes in and uh, hopefully get some confidence going because he was able to bury a couple of, of threes. Burroughs, another nice pass to the inside. They were able to get that going several different times tonight where they had some nice looks, and there's Johnson. Bill mentioned it at the time of that possession, taking it to the hole, not settling for the outside three. There's another Anderson hoop. And Savely. See you the other way after the nice steal. And we didn't see Savely for a while. Kyle sat on the bench throughout the first, but came in and ran things towards the end of the second. And there's another Pat Lepper. Uh, actually, you should check that. That's Terry Jenkins. He got some minutes there at the end as well. And this Demetrius able to go the other way. Uh, big game for Johnson tonight. He was able to end up with 14 points and just kept dishing it out to Mr. Perfect. Zelko Edgerich gets 5 for 5 from the field, 4 for 4 from outside, a perfect 4 for 4 from the charity stripe, 9 rebounds, 18 points. And uh, that is how we arrived to where we have arrived at. Uh, 107 to 59 IPFW their fifth win of the year and let's take a look at the uh, ha at the uh, final stats here Bill some of the things you jump out to you obviously I know one of the things you're going to say right away the assists no question but the field goal percentage is up about 20 points from what they've been averaged for the season their free throw percentage was up again as well they were great from the free throw line tonight but the assists, as we said, they had 20 assists to first, 16 assists the first half. They almost got the same amount the second half, but their efficient offense really allowed them to do that. But obviously with the physical disparity that we had in the basketball game allowed them to out-rebound significantly. Anderson 
But again, I think overall there was this 40 consistent minutes of basketball tonight that Coach Fife was really looking for from a lot of different people that, that played consistently well on both ends of the court. There's 13 games left in the season. I'm going to predict that there will be no uh, worse than 15 and 14 for the year. If they'd went out, they'd be 18-11, which would be a hell of a accomplishment for them. But I think these guys are playing real good basketball right now. We get Q back, and we get Johnson healthy on a consistent basis. Uh, these guys are going to make a run the second half, Tommy. Wow, the prognostication. Now, you've been really good with what the final scores have been, Bill. To say 15 wins is going out there. I like the pressure. All right, we're stamping it down. I'm writing it down. I'm taking a picture, whatever I have to do. Let's take a look at the scoring leaders. See them up there on the screen. Uh, Scott, a uh, majority of that was in the first half and was able to uh, kind of cruise from that point on. In fact, most of those, 15 of those, came in the first half. Uh, Zelko just had an all-around game. We just talked about him. Uh, Ten points in the first half. Finished up with 18. So 18 and 18 there at the top. And that third guy on the list, I thought for me personally, even as great as Zelko was, you know, I saw Zelko and we've seen Zelko throughout the course of the season play and play well, and we know he can do it, and we know he's going to be a big part of this team. But Demetrius Johnson really kind of starting to creep into the minds of all Don's fans out there right now as a possible answer for many different problems that the, teams ha the team can go through offensively from time to time. He is running the show well, and uh, and he is now starting to get his legs underneath him and starting to feel the game again. Tommy, with 15 games, obviously there's a lot of tape sharing goes on in college basketball, and these guys break down these films. But what's really happened in this game is that suddenly there's been emerging four uh, front-line players, and so suddenly it gives a totally different look than the way IPFW has played the first 15 games of the season. And so I think the second half of the year, you're going to see a different rotation, a different look, and obviously different minutes that Dane can kind of spread out in different ways. So both offensively and defensively, they're a totally different team now that they've got some contribution from Burroughs consistently, with Z tonight, with Tyler inside, and obviously Hawk always comes to play every game. But suddenly that gives you a great rotation up front, and they obviously got the deep rotation in the backcourt with Johnson and, uh, and uh, Carruthers back healthy. So. A lot of things to come away from to talk about tonight. A lot of positive uh, things that we can go over. 107 to 59, Coach Fife, Tylus. I like that look that he's going with right there. Tylus tonight, but victorious nonetheless. 107 to 59. We're going to take one last break. When we come back, we will wrap this puppy up from the Coliseum. You know, if she continues to spill product at a rate of three per hour, unit cost, say 60 cents, factor in breakage, downtime, lost sales, you're looking at 2400 a month. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. One university, two great names. Congratulations on the promotion. I hope you're saving the extra money. You gotta put it in stocks. If you wanna get ahead. No, no, bonds. And oh, CDs. Get it balanced. Get it balanced. Stick it under the mattress. <laughs> you you want 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 getting dollars. plenty of advice, but not enough facts? Visit saveandinvest.org. No confusing advice, no sales pitch. Just unbiased information and tools to help you manage your money with confidence. Saveandinvest.org. Life is good. But with a master's degree from IPFW, it could be even better. You could land a promotion, earn more money, become a leader in your field. And IPFW makes it easy. With affordable tuition, night and weekend classes, and more than 20 graduate programs from business to education to public affairs and more. Become the master of your future. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. Your graduate university. Each year, more than 145,000 Americans will be diagnosed with colon cancer. It's the second largest cancer killer in the United States, but it doesn't have to be. Colon cancer is preventable, treatable, and if found early enough, beatable. If you are over 50 or have a family history of colon cancer, speak to your doctor, get screened, and understand your treatment options. Heads up, coach. Visit MyBlueStar.org and pass it on.
Back to the Coliseum. Jerron Burroughs, Jakari Johnson, Chris Perkins. Couple last waves to the crowd. Nice little autographing session here after the game. And here's a look at our upcoming schedule. Western Illinois here on Tuesday night. Me and Bill will be back for that one here courtside on my TV. As we mentioned earlier, that game against Western Illinois back in November, five overtimes before the Downs were able to pull out a two-point victory in that one. And then New Jersey Tech, Saturday, January 13th at 4 o'clock on Channel 5. So those are the next couple of games here coming your way from IPFW's men's basketball team. And you see uh, a lot of crowds still uh, lingering throughout uh, the Coliseum, waiting for players to come out. You ever notice that the gym's a lot more crowded after a victory than, uh, than after a loss? But uh, nonetheless, they, they looked great out here tonight, and uh, it's something that, that they can hang their hat on and build into this Western Illinois game. These three games at home, especially if your prediction of 15 wins is going to come true, these three games at home are, are absolute musts. The critical stretch right there, Tommy. But, again, I think that they put together some great minutes tonight, a lot of things to build upon. The kids seem to still have that burning fire and desire to kind of take this program to another level, and uh, I feel confident uh, we're in a great position to do that. All right, well, final score tonight once again. You know, the, just a fantastic game by IPFW, 107-59. to They get over the 100-point mark for the second time this year, second time that uh, me and Bill have been here as well, and Coach Tungate now recruiting me to – come on the road throughout the season and he's probably going to hook you into that as well Bill so just to uh, let you know when we get off the air try to avoid Coach Tungate or <laughs> you'll be on the bus next week <laughs> alright so that's about it tonight from the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum be sure to tune in once again my TV here coming up on Tuesday where we will have the game against Western Illinois the Dons will look to go 6 and 11 on the year. You can see that game on my TV, digital broadcast 33.2 or on Comcast channel 252. That is on Tuesday evening, January 9th for more Mastodon men's basketball action against the Bulldogs of Western Illinois. That is coming up on Tuesday, as I said. For Bill Hensley, I'm Tommy Shegler saying so long from the Coliseum once again. Your final score tonight, 107 to 59. The Dons end a three-game slide, moving to five and 11 on the year.